Oh no, on Ulster Midnight Radio, it's your favourite segment, Local Haunts. Several years ago, I visited the Cock and Bull restaurant in the Clandy Boy Lodge Hotel, which borders the sprawling Clandy Boy estate, owned by the Blackwood family since the 17th century, and later, the Dufferins. I quite enjoyed my meal there, and, as is habitual for me, I remember checking the reviews of the restaurant on TripAdvisor. It was here that I came across something rather strange. The review I read made a passing reference to a ghostly highwayman who was supposedly seen at the nearby Ballysala de Mesna Bridge. The author of the review wrote something to the effect of, I was glad we didn't spot him. Sometime between this event and my idea to research this legend further, this particular review vanished from TripAdvisor and even attempts to track it down via the internet archive were fruitless. The elusive origins and scarce evidence regarding the Phantom Highwayman of Ballysala proved to be running themes throughout this investigation. The Ballysala Bridge is locally known mostly for its incidents with tall industrial vehicles getting stuck beneath it after ignoring the low bridge ahead signage. This has resulted in many calls and petitions for the bridge to be removed, but this is unlikely to occur due to it being a grade 2 listed building. However, I was able to find a few mentions of the highwayman online. One in a Spooky Isles article listing five haunted places near Dundonald, and a detailed first-hand account from the Belfast Forum on the old Belfast Ghost Stories thread. The account was posted in May 2009, and the experience occurred roughly 20 years previously, placing it in 1989. The account is as follows. My husband and I were driving home from Bangor to Belfast along the road past the George. It was around midnight and was a dark February evening. As we drove through the small bridge we both noticed someone standing on the grass verge. Because it was such a dark night we only caught a brief glimpse of this man. He was wearing a black cloak black trousers tucked into black boots which came up to his knees. We could only see him from the waist down and the bottom of the cloak was blowing in the wind. We both presumed there had been a fancy dress party or something like that on in the George and that this person was walking home and had stepped back off the road until our car passed. It did seem a bit odd at the time but wasn't something that either of us thought anything more about. About ten years later, a couple of girls in work were telling each other ghost stories. One of them who lived in Bangor said she had heard there was a highwayman that haunted the road past the George, and that he stood at the bridge and that this was where he had been hung. I could never in a million years explain the feeling I had after hearing this. I had never thought of it being a spooky experience at all, as when we saw him he was very real looking not ghostly. I tried many times to try and find out more about this and have searched the internet and never really found anything about the story. I did phone Clandy Boy Estate and they confirmed that this was a true story and that the highwayman was regularly seen beside the bridge where he had been hung. Now, I did consider trying to reach out to this person to ask more about their experience. However, this thread has been inactive for almost 10 years and Kathy Nine, the author, didn't even respond to any comments about her sighting in 2009, so I very much doubt she would reply almost 15 years later. I did find her detail about phoning the estate very intriguing, however. Janet Kane Levin also mentioned doing this on the Spooky Isles article and verifying the truth of the hanging. So, I decided to contact the estate myself. Okay, I'm gonna try to call the estate and see what happens. Hello? 
Uh, hello there. I'm um, I'm just ringing. Um, just wondering about some local uh, history research in the area. I'm I'm researching uh, a local legend about the uh, bridge um, near the uh, Candy Boy Lodge Hotel. Um, Unfortunately, I have been asked to keep my correspondence with Clandy Boy confidential, but while I was waiting for the appropriate person to respond, I went for an investigation in the area with a local who knows how to reach the top of the bridge. What is that? Geeks like that? Oh yeah. Belfast is uh, it's the seventh rainiest city in Europe. Is that actually true? Yeah. I'm not surprised to be honest. I looked up the statistics like a couple of uh, uh -huh. couple of days ago. Yeah. Oh yes, three sorry. It's interesting though, because it's like where we're walking right now is like a really old trackway. Oh yeah, this is like people people brought horse and carriage this way. Yeah. yeah so this this was a coach lane, you know. Yeah. Like just There's like, as you can see, like there's literally no way to get up here other than no. from that track. No way to get up, and no way to like even see it from down below. Because... Sometime after this exploration, I received a reply from the Clandy Boy estate who, disappointingly, were unable to find anything about the legend on their own records. So it seems that this part of the story is untrue, at least the detail that the hanging of the highwayman is verified, or perhaps a particular document has just been lost. I was then directed towards Belfast Central Heritage via Libraries Northern Ireland. I entered a query regarding the origin of this legend and shortly thereafter received a detailed and revealing response. The Ballycella or De Mesna Bridge does not appear on the first ordnance survey map of Northern Ireland dating from between 1834 to 46. In fact, the Irish Architectural Archive states it was built for the 5th Baron Dufferin in 1853 for the Belfast and County Down Railway. This means that if we are to believe the legend, the supposed hanging should have taken place after this date. However, it also means that the hanging post-dates the so-called Golden Age of Highwaymen by well over 50 years. As Hugh Murray from Belfast Central Heritage also pointed out, by the 19th century, criminals were generally hanged in public places such as courthouses, marketplaces and jails. He found no reports in any of the Belfast or County Down newspapers of any highwaymen hanged or executed in the area. He also recommended that I search the Public Records Office of Northern Ireland for events on Clandy Boy Estate which took place before the establishment of newspapers. After extensive searches using numerous keywords, I again came up empty handed. There was one highwayman killed in County Down the infamous outlaw Count Redmond O'Hanlon of Ireland's Gaelic nobility was shot near Hilltown in Southdown. Some accounts say he was murdered in his sleep, but others say the event occurred near Eight Mile Bridge. It's an incredibly tenuous link, but perhaps the initial seed of the legend could originate here. I'm afraid that this is where the trail, if there ever even was one, goes cold. If there's anything this exploration has taught me, it's that some stories are just that, stories. 
I'm surprised that I wasn't more frustrated at the lack of compelling evidence for this event. I think it's because it only adds character to the area. If music colours silence, then legends and folklore colour the landscape, give it more value and significance, while also reminding us that people walked these paths before us, and they will do so long after. Perhaps a highwayman really did pass away at Ballysala Bridge, and was trying to tell his story by appearing on those dark winter's nights. I doubt if we'll ever know the true origin of this legend. Besides, I'm probably the only person in a 20 mile radius who would go to such ridiculous lengths to research a historical footnote. But, by speaking on it now, I keep the highwayman of Ballysala alive for one more day.